seen over the last two days really is whether there are lots of different whether there are lots of differences in traits and behaviors. Can anybody he can everybody hear me? Yeah. Good. Um, um, is whether there are differences, real differences, between the traits and behaviors of men and women, or whether we are, in fact, the same for a lot of, for all of these traits and differences. For a long while, and I think most people in this room would agree, the gender differences hypothesis has been out there arguing that, yeah, there are measurable differences between the sexes, that's fine. In 2005, a researcher named Hyde came along, however, and argued that if you look at these measures, if you look at these experiments that we've run, and you look at how they apply to the real world, there aren't actually that many differences between the groups. Her research was backed up by a team of researchers around Zell, who in 2015 did a, a metathentesis and statistically confirmed what Hyde had claimed. Hyde had claimed. For those of you who don't know what a metathesis is, let's take a step back. The study that I'm presenting to you today is a meta-analysis. For those of you not familiar with the term meta-analysis, when you do a study, when you do a normal study, normal analysis, you have normal results, normal analyses. A meta-analysis is a systematic review of a particular area and a statistical combination of the results of all these different studies. A metathesis then goes one step further and takes all the meta-analyses that have been done in the field, combines the results and looks at that, which theoretically should be a very strong statistical tool. Should be. I'm not going to argue with Hyde or Zell, but what I'm going to do is that even within Zell's research, one thing was undisputed, that sex differences exist for mental rotation ability. Now, mental rotation ability is, and I memorized this, the ability to rotate two-dimensional 2D and three-dimensional 3D objects in your mind through space. For those of you who just blanked and have no idea what I'm talking about, think about Tetris. I hope most of you are familiar with the concept of Tetris, where you rotate blocks, fit them in, and when you have completed a line, it vanishes. Mental rotation ability for two-dimensional object is nothing else than playing Tetris. You could also do mental rotation tests for three-dimensional things, like here. And if there are any game aficionados out there among you who program games for fun or for a living, get in contact, because I'd love to play that. <laughs> uh, anyways, in all these mental rotation things, we have seen that men perform better than women. Now, if you're, sure, if you're now close to blanking out and thinking to yourself, OK, that's really boring. Why should I care? Well, let me try to, to give you a reason. Professor Sturt, in his fantastic lecture just now, pointed out that there are cognitive reasons for why boys fall behind girls. Dr. Farrell, as well, has pointed out that there are emotional factors for why boys fall behind girls. But what if there's also potentially biological factors? What if? Boys fall behind girls in education because boys are biologically better at, mental, at verbal skills and boys are just a little bit better at rotating things. In that case, we, or the educational system at least, would disadvantage boys because of something that could be intrinsic or that could be learned. In any case, it's worth exploring it. So what could be the potential causes? This slide here represents the good old nurture-nature debate, or nature-nurture debate, which all of you hopefully have heard about. Whether we are a tabula rasa, which everything gets described upon, ascribed upon, or whether biological, we take biological things with us. The debate has been going on for 2,400 years. I'm not going to solve it in one slide. But I'm going to, and I'm certain I won't solve it in my lifetime, but I'm going to give you a whistle-stop tour of why we think there are different mental why we think that there are different explanations for mental rotation ability. One idea is that boys aren't actually better than girls, but girls perform worse than boys in these tests. Sounds a bit confusing, but stick with me. When you identify yourself with a particular group, 
particularly, for example, in this case, men and women. And you perform against a group who you think is better than yourself. Because we often hear this, oh, men are better at men are better at rotating things, women are better at talking, Asian people are better at doing math things, <coughs> stereotypes as they are. Then you will automatically perform worse in a given test. This hasn't to be true for adults. If you do mental rotation tasks with adults, Mo has shown that this is the case. For children, this hasn't been confirmed. There's also the idea of differential experiences. Basically, boys and girls starting off being able to perform mental rotation things at the same level, but boys partake more in activities that cause them to become better over time. As Professor Stern has pointed out, video games, for example, especially edge action strategy games, improve mental rotation ability, and boys tend to play more than girls. Also, sports, like skateboarding, Thank you for all these fantastic hooks, by the way. Um, like skateboarding can improve mental rotation ability. And also, there's the idea of different solving strategies. It is that when men take those tests, they tackle them on a we'll be all right attitude. Whereas women take longer, they think about these. And when you then implement a moderator or a factor like time limits. Women suddenly feel more under pressure because they don't want to make a mistake. In fact, there is some biological evidence for it that there are different solving strategies. If you take men and women like Han did and his research was in 2010, you put them in an MRI machine and you let them solve mental rotation tasks, because that's definitely what you want to do when magnets are stirring around your head, then you can see that men and women have different areas of their brain lighting up. Which means, which means that there is some different method going on here. Unfortunately, we don't know whether that is because of something like differential experience. The brain is highly plastic. It could mean that over time, we've just learned these things differently. Or whether there is a biological factor here. The biological factor being sex hormones, in particular testosterone, which children are, which boys are proportionately more exposed to during, um, during pregnancy and then later on at the onset of puberty. So with all this knowledge, you then go and go and you ask yourself, okay, that's great. Um, how can we find that out? How can we like, pinpoint whether it's psychosocial factors, biological factors, a combination of these things? What you then do is you go ahead and you could think to yourself, well, we know that maybe sex hormones are a factor, so you exclude all children under the, over the age of 13, because that's when research in this field has argued a second boost of testosterone comes in, which could skew your results. Then you look at when sex differences emerge for the first time, and you see whether age has an impact. Because if age has an impact, uh, over time until the onset of puberty, that would mean that boys and girls potentially have different solving strategies, learn different solving strategies, have differential experiences. If H doesn't have an impact, then it could be something innate, something biological going on here. Okay, with all that said, when do boys and girls develop mental, abil mental rotation ability for the first time? When can we observe a sex difference for the first time? And this is where the second big question mark that underlay lay the study came up. We don't know. Um, we've been researching this topic for about 50 years, not, not me personally, but um, area people overall have researched this topic for 50 years, and there have been widely different claims. At around the age of four, said mom, or one of the first people who researched this, probably below the age of 13, said Lynn and Peterson, who did the first big meta-analysis in this topic, <coughs> And Moore, Johnson, and Quinn, and Lieben, um, different from each other, in 2008 published two studies where they found that there is circumstantial evidence for three-month-old children already displaying sex differences. With all these questions, we went ahead and we formed our hypotheses. Because all the previous research has shown that males perform better than females, we've also assumed that boys perform better than girls in two-dimensional and three-dimensional mental rotation ability. We went ahead and we said, 
well, there must be an impact of social socialization of some kind of social factor. So we will assume that age up until the onset of puberty will have an effect. And let's go a step further. Let's pinpoint this. Let's say time limits have an effect. Because if time limits have an effect, we can pinpoint it even more and we could claim, make a more or less strong claim, that there is, that there is the, um, differential solving strategies at play here. Now stick with me for a moment while I lead you through the boring methodology part. And if there are any people who would like to talk about this more, please come see me later. We did a database search. We used those terms. We included all, set, all studies we could find for two-dimensional and three-dimensional mental rotation ability below the age of 13. We wanted to make sure that we only had normally developing individuals because some studies with individuals with something, with children particularly with <coughs> Um, hormonal disorders like congenital adrenal hypoplasia have been shown to skew results with females uh, with girls actually performing much better. At the end, we included 21 studies for a 3D sample and 20 studies for a 2D analysis. The results? No, wait, is that the results? No, the methodology. Sorry, the methodology is that what we looked at was something called Cohen's D. Cohen's D measures the difference, the effect size between two groups. If you have results between two different groups and you say they perform significantly different from each other, you still don't know how strong that difference is. For our thing, what is most important is that 0.5 means a moderate difference. We combine the, we combine the result and from now on I'm going to talk about the weighted effect size Z, which is basically a Cohen Z for meta-analyses, so for an analysis that analyzes lots of different data sets. Significant levels of 0.05. For those of you who have never seen a forest plot before, let me quickly give you an overview. Those are the results we found. Over here you have the studies that we've included. And then this line marks sex difference. Everything to the right shows that boys perform better, and everything to the left shows that girls perform better. As you can see in this graph for two-dimensional studies, all our studies showed that boys perform better than girls. The weighted Z we found is 0.59, which is a moderate difference between the sexes. Which means that there is a sex difference between boys and girls for three-dimensional three mental rotation ability, and it's that strong. For 2D samples, the whole thing looks a little different. Again, the names of the studies here, boys being better on this side, girls being better on this side, and you can see that we have five studies out of the 20 we've included, 25%, which show that girls perform better than boys. So for children, for two-dimensional results, the results aren't as clear-cut, but we still have significant results. We still show that there is a little less than a moderate effect for two-dimensional studies. For those of you interested in, and then, for the, and then for our second, our third hypothesis, finding out whether age has an impact or whether time limits have an impact, what we did was we regressed. We did a meta regression for two dimensional, three dimensional factor, uh, mental rotation ability for age. And oddly enough, and here's what's really interesting about this study, is that age did not have a significant effect, which if you take these results, um, on face value would mean that social factors don't have an impact. For time limits, the same thing was found. There wasn't a significant effect on time limits on mental rotation ability in children. For those of you very quickly who are interested in publication bias, so wanting to know whether, whether um, there is some kind of drawer effect with researchers publishing significant results and not publishing unsignificant results for 3D funnel plots. And I'll quickly go over this, and if anybody has more details and more questions, please come talk to me later. We um, probably don't have publication bias here, and for 2D funnel plots, we potentially have publication bias. If anybody's interested, please come talk to me later. So, if you've just zoned out for the methodology part, need your attention again, please. <laughs> Our first hypothesis was confirmed. There is mental rotation, there are, mental, there are differences in two-dimensional and three-dimensional mental rotation ability between boys and girls. 
no other meta-analysis has looked at has looked at this area in detail as much as we have. For our second and our third hypothesis, neither of them were confirmed, which, as I said before, if you take our results at face value, would mean that there's a potential strong influence of biological factors, and children do not display differential solving strategies yet. Unfortunately, just like with any study, there are limitations. In general, we have tested mental rotation ability for 40 years now, and I wish I could say that for once in psychology, every, different, every team has used the exact same test. It's not the case. There's five, six, seven different tests out there which are used, some are constructed by the researchers. Not all of them have been validated properly, which means that some of these results will be, will be, will be distorted. We can't do anything about it. For age, I need to remind everybody that infancy studies only give circumstantial evidence. Infants who can't speak and can, cannot hold a, a, pen, a pencil or pen either turn out to not be very good at these tests. So you have to use something else instead. That's what they did. Also, there's the debate about the onset of puberty. When Lyndon Peterson in 1985 said, said that at 30 puberty hits in, they were probably right. And we kept to this because this is generally the trend within research. Unfortunately, there has been some debate that puberty has shifted to an earlier age, especially for girls, which would have once again distorted the results. For time limits, I again would like to say that time limits were in all the studies the same. They were, that could distort. And additionally, only about 80% of our studies included time limits in the first place. And because of time limits, and because of time, because of time constraints, uh, constraints both on John's and my side, who ran the study, there's no inclusion of unpublished papers, unfortunately. So, to conclude, because we need to head on, what have we found? Two dimensional, two dimensional studies had a Z or capital D of 0.48, not quite a moderate effect. Three dimensional studies had an 0.59, capital D or Z. Uh, quite a moderate effect. If you compare them, compare that to the resign, combined results at Zellcom and the metathinthesis, it's about the same, which, which means you could argue that there isn't much change between children and adults. Sex differences definitely emerge in childhood. We can be sure, sure about that. Biological factors could be a dominant cause, but at this point, because of the limitations, we can't be certain. There'll be more research that we'll do on this, more data analysis that we will do on this, to this until we publish the study, and also, we, and also, uh, and also biology, we need more research. However, if that were true, we'd have to reconsider the system, our educational system, once more, because that would mean that we, because of something innate, disadvantage one group over another one. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>